Hey folks, this is Ranker with a Diablo 4 Season 4 class tier list. If you're wondering what class to play this season, this video should help you out. Season 4 represents the biggest update that Diablo 4 has gotten yet. With a complete itemization rework, new crafting systems that allow us to empower our characters in entirely new ways, a revamped Helltide experience, and a new challenging endgame mode called The Pit, which will be super important to run. Season 4 represents a power buff across all classes. Every class is going to be faster, stronger, we're going to level up so much faster. Now for Season 4, we actually had a test server, so we got to try out a lot of the changes. But since the test server ended, we got some patch notes with some nerfs to some of the overperforming builds, as expected. Also, some bugs were fixed. This tier list is going to be based on the test server experience, plus the subsequent patch notes. But there are some question marks about how some of those bug builds are going to work now that the bugs are allegedly fixed. And there's always going to be the possibility that Rob, I mean, uh, someone might find some crazy new bugged or powerful interaction that went unnoticed previously. So we'll put up on screen what the season three tier list looked like. And I can give you a teaser. There's going to be a lot of movement this season. Just one of these classes is staying exactly where it is. Can you guess which one? Now, what is factored into this tier list? This tier list is a measure of how powerful the class is overall with respect to being able to tackle a variety of content in the game. We're going to go through exactly what, but not just tackle it, also give you options. So the idea here is that you can pick a class and feel safe that you'll have a variety of builds that can tackle a ton or all of the content in the game. So if a class, for instance, has just one build and it's the best build in the game and all of its other builds are garbage, that does not necessarily mean that that class is going to be in my S tier. It, it might be, we're going to go through explanations of things, but in general, we're looking for classes that not only perform well, but also have multiple builds to select from that perform well. So it's important to not just skip to the end of the video, look at the graphic, make your choice, but rather listen and understand to why the different classes are in the different tiers. We're going to call out specific builds for every class as well. All of those builds will be found on maxroll.gg for complete guides. So we're going to go through the four different categories that we're measuring for the tier list. And my ideal state of balance is that every class has multiple builds that excel at all four of these things. So category one is the leveling experience from one to 50. Some people say that this is not important, that only endgame is important, but some players are newer players and they're going to try out a class for the first time. And if they're having a miserable experience, they might stop playing Diablo 4 altogether. In which case, it doesn't matter how powerful the class is at the end game if they never get there. Now, the good news is that early leveling is in a better balanced state than it's ever been. But there are still some classes that lag behind others. However, in Season 4, it's going to be faster to level to 50 than ever. So I'm going to factor the importance of the 1 to 50 less than ever before. I was already deprioritizing it last season. It's going to be even less of a factor in the overall class's weight this season. All right, factor two is going to be general endgame farming. We're talking Helltide. We're talking the lower Nightmare Dungeons. We're talking Whispers. Basically, all the content that you're going to be doing a lot of, but isn't particularly challenging. So it comes down to how efficiently you can tackle it. Helltide in particular will be really big in season four. However, in season four, Every class is going to be able to excel and, and smash this content over multiple builds. This is partly due to the tempering system, which is going to be a huge power boost to all classes. So for this category, category two, I'm actually classifying all classes as equal. Yes, some classes do have more build options than others, but every class has options here. Balance is in a good place for this. Then category three is taking down bosses, specifically uber bosses. We had the uber boss ladder introduced in, I believe, season two. Season four, we're getting a new uber, uh, the twin of Duriel and Ariel, uber and Ariel. Uh, a completely new fight, really cool fight. She's going to have the same drop table as Duriel. But then in addition to that, we're also getting super duper uber versions of all the uber bosses. They're going to be called tormented bosses, and they're level 200 versions of all the existing uber bosses that are going to have even better drops. They're going to be the 
the best bosses to run for the best odds of getting uber uniques. So odds are at some point you will find yourself running bosses. That said, unique items are deprioritized this season thanks to tempering. Tempering can only be done on legendaries. So you might not need as many uniques as you needed in past seasons. So bossing a little less important than last season, perhaps. And we also have trade opened up now that you can actually trade uniques. So maybe you won't have to boss at all. You can have a buddy trade you unique or you can you know, trade gold with someone or whatever the case is. The only thing that you cannot trade, however, is Uber Uniques. So Uber Uniques will still be desired. The Shaco probably still best in slot for most builds. And that's something you're going to have to work for yourself. So bossing still important. And bossing is not in a great state of balance. We got classes ranking all over the place here. Then category four, we have the pit and we have high nightmare dungeons. So outside of the level 200 tormented bosses, this will be the most challenging content in the game. It's also something that we're going to need to do a lot of at high ends of play to really maximize our characters. The pit in particular is going to be the hardest piece of content, and we're going to need that to master work our gear. Now, the balance amongst classes here isn't too bad, or at least it wouldn't be if there wasn't a clear winner. Take out the clear winner and balance is pretty good. So let's get into the tier list now. And we're going to start at the C tier. So we have nothing lower than C tier. And to clarify, C tier is not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. I just had to put the Sorcerer and the Barbarian this far away from S tier. And you'll understand why once we get to S tier. Now between Sorcerer and Barbarian, I don't think there's a clear winner and loser. The Sorcerer is better at leveling, but weaker against bosses. Whereas the Barbarian is just kind of consistently decent at everything. Talking about the Sorcerer specifically... Barring some upset, again, either a bug or something new discovered, Sorcerer doesn't look like it's going to have that one crazy build that destroys all content, right? Ball Lightning, for instance, has been taken down significantly in power. It's still a good build, but it's not the build to rule them all anymore. The Sorcerer's main strength is that it has no shortage of selection of builds for speed farming the, the Helltides and the overworld content. If we're looking at bossing, Firebolt going to be the best option for the Sorcerer. Not amazing, but it's just the best that the Sorcerer can really do. Excellent single target damage, but this is not a build you want to run for any other content. The sexy new build for Sorcerer is Frozen Orb. That was super fun on PTR. It's been brought down in power significantly since PTR. We're estimating it's still going to be a good build, but not amazing. It will be one of the top builds for the Sorcerer. It's pretty easy to play. It's, again, going to be excellent at speed farming content, but it's probably going to end up being mediocre against bosses and in the pit. Blizzard will continue to perform well. It's also easy to play. Ball Lightning, as we said, is going to keep performing well. These three builds, Blizzard, Ball Lightning, and Frozen Orb, they're roughly equal at all content. No clear winner between these three, so really, whichever you want to take, feel free. Other Sorcerer builds that are really good at, again, that speed farming content, but aren't going to perform as well against bosses with a pit. We got Arc Lash. It's a generator build. Really good for doing Helltide. Super easy to play, but it's going to be terrible against bosses. Also, isn't going to push far in the pit. Fireball is another good speed farm option, but its damage just does not hold up for the pit or bossing. It really struggles against single target. Chain Lightning is another great speed farm option. Uh, it's a little harder to play as a build, and it's really not good against bosses or in the pit. But it is, yeah, one of the best, if not the best sorcerer build for leveling 1 to 50. And another good leveling build from 1 to 50 is Firewall. Those are the top two sorcerer builds for going 1 to 50. Now, another thing this season, every class as part of the season journey is going to be getting a, uh, a suite of gear that is all themed towards some kind of a build. And for sorcerer, it's going to be Incinerate. The thing is, I'm not really aware of an Incinerate build that is particularly good. So if I were running a Sorcerer, I probably wouldn't even really work with that gear. I wouldn't bother trying to do the Season Journey. I'd probably start Chain Lightning 1 to 50, stay on Chain Lightning after that, and then I would either move into Frozen Orb, Blizzard, or Ball Lightning, depending on what items I drop. And basically, if I get Glacial Aspect, I go Blizzard. If I get the Gravitational Aspect, I go Ball Lightning. And if I find the new Fractured Winter Glass unique item, I'd go Frozen Orb. So again, just Chain Lightning straight all the way into one of those three builds. Now, as for the Barbarian, obviously Barbarian was king in Season 3 and most of the game's life. But after the nerfs were getting to Hammer the Ancients and Charge, this meta is gone. 
Barb's taking a heavy hit this season. No more Barb's one-shotting bosses easily with the big bonks from the hammer. That is until Rob finds the next Broken Barbarian build. Barb's also lost their inherent 10% damage reduction, and overall it's gonna be a lot harder to just stack damage reduction under the new itemization. So you're a Barb, you're in melee, it's now harder to be tanky. But the Double Swing Twisters build, looking like it's gonna be very strong this season. It's not amazing against bosses, but it still fares pretty well. It's a pretty easy to play build. It's good at everything in the game, it's just not amazing at anything other than speed content. And the season journey gear you're gonna get will help put this build together as well. There's also a Bash Generator build that it's gonna be really hard to gear for. It needs some very specific gear that you're only gonna really get at high level. But this is also a good build for bossing and most content in general. There's also a Kick Death Blow build that should be able to hit bosses for like a billion damage, but it's a super specialized build and it's just for bossing, really. Thorns Barb is also doing pretty well this season. It's gonna be possibly the tankiest Barbarian you can run. Super easy to play. It's pretty good in the pit, it's pretty good in Nightmare Dungeons, pretty good in Helltides, but it's not as good against bosses as the other builds we've mentioned. Now, the good news about the Barbarian is that if all you really care about, or if your main focus is just speed farming the Helltide and the Whispers and lower Nightmare Dungeons, you got tons of options. Hammer of the Ancients, Whirlwind, Upheaval, Leap Quake, uh, Rend, all excellent builds for, for doing Helltide and all that, but they are not going to be competitive for bossing or pushing the pit. For leveling 1 to 50, both Double Swing and Upheaval are decent options. If I were to make a Barbarian this season, I would just start with Double Swing and just take it all the way, 1 to 100, just stay on Double Swing. So that moves us to the B tier, where the Rogue and the Druid live. And again, no clear winner between these two classes. They each have their strengths and weaknesses. Rogue is excellent at leveling 1 to 50, Druid remains the slowest leveler, but at the highest difficulties of play, the Druid does outperform the Rogue. And for the Druid, it's all about the Werewolf Tornado build. This is going to destroy bosses. It's by far the best Druid build for, for bossing. It does so much damage, so it also does really well in High Nightmare Dungeons and the Pit. Probably going to be the best Pit pushing build for the Druid. It does, however, require the Tempest Roar unique. You cannot run this build without getting a Tempest Roar. But once you get it, this build is easy to play, and it's pretty fast, though not the fastest druid build around. If you want speed, but still want to be a caster, then the Lightning Storm Druid, still easy to play, should still perform well in the pit, but it focuses more on area of effect damage, so it's not as great at single target like bosses, and in the pit, the bosses are pretty tough as well. Another great speed farming build is going to be Shred, so whether you're doing Helltide or lower Nightmare Dungeons, Shred's a lot of fun. Super easy to play as well. Its damage doesn't scale up all that well though, so not great for the pit, and even worse against bosses. Pulverized build is all reliable here. Pretty easy to play, it's great for speed farming, it's super tanky. Its damage doesn't scale very well for the more challenging content, however. It holds up better than Shred, but both are not great builds for bossing. And the Season Journey gear is actually going to give you pulverized gear. Then there's the Hurricane build. This build was kind of crazy on the PTR because of a bug and that bug is being fixed, so it's not super clear how it's going to perform now in Season 4. It's probably going to be decent, but not the best. But we'll see. And for leveling 1 to 50, there still is no good Druid build. There are some options better than others, like Lightning Storm and Pulverize. That's the best you can do, but again, not great. If I were to play a Druid this season, I would start with Pulverize, take advantage of that free Pulverize gear, and my ultimate build would be to go for Werewolf Tornado. But... If I happen to get the gear that I need for Lightning Storm before I get my Tempest Roar, then I would transition from Pulverize to Lightning Storm and then into Werewolf Tornado. As for Rogue, ranged rogues are on the rise for Season 4. Twisting Blades took a hit. It's dropping down across most categories. The Rogue really shines at speed farming. Scaling-wise, though, it's not going to keep up with the Druid in the Pit, for instance. There is one rogue rapid fire build that you can build that's gonna just like destroy bosses but it's a highly specialized build and you really don't want to use it for anything else but that's gonna be like your tormented boss killer easy for more versatile builds we're looking at barrage rogue being pretty easy to play it's excellent at farming you know speed farming your hell tides and all that pretty good in the pit gonna be mediocre at bossing and barrage is the free gear set you get in the season journey Another ranged rogue, you got Penetrating Shot, excellent at speed content. Harder to play than Barrage, but still not too difficult. It holds up in Nightmare Dungeons, but it does start to fall off in the pit. It is better at bossing than Barrage, though, but still not great. 
Then you can actually put together a shadow step build that's going to be super fast, probably the fastest build for, uh, for Rogue at least, for going through overworld content. And it actually holds a better than barrage and penetrating shot in more challenging content, but it has huge, huge, huge gear requirements. There's also a heart seeker basic attack build. If you're looking for a ranged build that performs better in the pit and higher nightmare uh, dungeon tiers. In fact, it performs pretty good at everything in the game. It's just, it's kind of a jack of all trades. It's not going to be like the best build for any category, but it performs very well. It's very reliable. Rapid Fire is another versatile rogue build. It can't put out as much damage as the Heartseeker build, so it's not going to be as great for bossing or the pits, but it is a lot easier to put this build together. For leveling 1 to 50, ranged is once again king. Again, Twisting Blades has fallen off. Penetrating Shot and Barrage, both excellent choices here. So if I were to make a rogue, I would just start Barrage. Going to get your Barrage gear, move into Barrage in the end game, and then I would swap to Heartseeker at level 100 when I get all the gear. So, that moves us into the A tier, where we have... Nothing at all! Nothing at all! Nothing at all! Yes, this is because in Season 4, Necromancer is so ridiculously powerful that it doesn't just deserve its own tier, it deserves an entire extra tier as a buffer to show just how much better it is than all the other classes. The Necro is the only class with multiple build options that excel in every category that we measure. It doesn't matter what you want to do in the game, what you care about the most, the Necro can do it, and it can give you multiple build options as well. So again, barring any upsets, any surprises, some new Barbarian build <laughs> that destroys everything, Necromancer ought to be the best class of Season 4. I'm expecting tons of people to be starting Necromancer. Minion Necro has sort of been a joke for the past three seasons. It is not a joke. Who's laughing now? Minion Necros are laughing. Minions are super strong now. The Minion Necro will destroy bosses. It's super easy to play because your minions just do their thing and you can pick your nose. Uh, it's going to destroy pit content. It's going to destroy everything. Uh, its weakness is that it doesn't move very fast, but it doesn't mean it's slow. You can even level now as a pure minion from 1 to 50. Your Season Journey starter gear is going to be minion gear. There's also a shadow minion build if you want to shake things up a bit. Still go minion, but you're going to rely on some shadow damage over time effects. It's easy to transition out of your leveling minion build into shadow minion. Like any minion build, however, it's not very fast. And Necromancer even has non-minion options. Bone Spirit absolutely obliterates bosses. Possibly the build in the game with the highest burst damage potential. Those Bone Spirits can be hitting for over a billion damage. But it is quite a bit trickier to play than minion builds. Necros in general aren't very fast, but this build is still faster than minion builds. Then other great Necromancer builds, Bone Spear still performs very well, excellent at speed farming Helltides and Whispers. Its damage just doesn't scale up as well as the other builds we just mentioned, so it won't be as strong for higher difficulty content, and it is a little bit more skill-based, it sort of is that sniper playstyle. Blood Surge, still strong. That's the big AoE damage. It's also a super tanky build. It's very easy to play. It's really good at speed farming overworld content. Its single target damage, however, is quite weak. For leveling 1 to 50, this is probably still the best build in the game. It used to be the only good option for Necro going 1 to 50, but now Minion is also very good. So again, whatever you want to be doing in the game, Necro has a top tier build for it. My current plan for Season 4 is to start Necro. I'm going to start with a minion necro. I normally, when I start necro, I go blood surge to start with. I'm going to go straight minion this time, and I might transition into bone spear at the end. Sorry, bone spirit at the end. See how that goes, and then maybe I'll go back to minion. We'll see. But that's my tier list. Those are my plans for the season. What are you going with in season four? Sound off in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Special thanks to my supporters for making these videos possible. And subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.